So you want to jump out of an airplane solo? You're wondering how to become a skydiver? Well, keep on watching. Well, the first step once you've considered taking your skydiving course is of course finding the right skydiving school near you. How to do that? Very simple. Go on Google and type skydiving school in your city. And then you'll find out if there is any school in your own city or in the surroundings. Another element you may want to verify is if the skydiving school is a part of the skydiving association of your country. So as example, it's the Canadian Sport Parachuting Association in Canada, United States Parachuting Association in the US, and there's also the Australian one. So make sure to check that. It's a great way to verify if the course you're gonna follow is along the standard of your country's association. By the way, my name is Catherine Bernier from Skydive Vibes, where we share the passion of skydiving and helping you become better and safer skydivers. So if you're new here, consider subscribing not to miss our videos all about skydiving. So this video is for you, the future skydiver who wants to start their skydiving course. So the goal is to give you a brief overview so that you can get the most out of your experience of becoming a skydiver. So the skydiving course, commonly called AFF, is drafted for a rapid and safe progression towards becoming a solo skydiver. Note that depending of where you are in the world, what are the skydiving association you are under, the terms may vary, but in general, the learnings remains the same. So AFF stands for accelerated freefall, meaning that the learning process in freefall is accelerated due to the individual nature of the instruction. So of course, the goal of this course is to take people with zero or very little experience in skydiving and help them gain the knowledge and skills to become solo skydivers after only eight jumps. Yes, that means that when you start your course, it's not long until you actually perform a solo skydive. Of course, the skydiving course program and the teaching techniques used are made to help skydiving students to progress as quickly and as safely as possible. First things first, we need to understand the place of safety in the sport because of course, safety comes first. Anybody who starts in the sport will most likely have some doubts and be nervous and that's totally normal. Skydiving is an extreme but safe sport and the drop zones are responsible to take all the necessary measure to keep you safe along your learning progression. The goal is really to convert nervousness into confidence through the learning progression. Of course, with all extreme sports, there's a lot of thinkings that comes around, around is that dangerous? And if we take a look at the statistics, here's what we see actually. The probability of fatality through motor collision is one in 114, choking on your own food, one in 3,461, bike-related incident, coming in contact with a hornet, wasp or bee, a dog bite or attack, a lightning strike. And at the end, we have skydiving with one in 220,300. So at a rate of 0.004 skydiving fatalities in a thousand, which means one fatality in every 167 jumps. So you're more likely to die being hit by a lightning strike. So with all those numbers, I think it's fair to consider skydiving as an extreme sport, but not risky. Next, let's talk about nervousness, because if you're feeling a little bit nervous thinking about the start of your skydiving course, it's totally normal and it's a natural place to be. In fact, that's really the best position to be in, because then you'll be more aware, you'll listen more closely to the instructions, and that will help you to perform better in the end. And actually, I've seen somewhere the three stage that the skydiving students are going through in their progression. So let me share those with you so that you know what you'll be facing and also that it is totally normal. So the first stage you'll be facing is when you arrive at the drop zone. So of course, you'll feel a little bit nervous. You might reconsider your decision of taking that skydiving course, but take a deep breath. That's totally normal. And you might still be eager to learn everything at once. 
The second stage is after a few jump. So you may start to feel overwhelmed by all the information, by all the things you need to remember at each and every jump of the progression. And again, that's totally normal because going through the ground school and your first level jumps can be mentally challenging, but again, it's normal. And the third stage is when you are doing your consolidation jumps, meaning that now you're doing full jumps by yourself. You understand all the steps you need to do prior and during your jump. And so that is when you start to feel that you are the king or the queen of the world. And so being overwhelmed starts to pay off. So of course those stages won't apply to everyone. Those are generalization, but it gives you an idea. And if you're feeling in a certain way during your progression, make sure to think twice that it might be totally normal and uh, share that with your instructors or coaches at that time too. They will know how to reassure you. On a side note, in the case where you have to take a break in between jumps, you may start to feel more anxious. That's totally normal. Make sure to reach out to your contacts at the drop zone, your instructors who helped you to start your progression. They will be best to reassure you and also make sure that you are restarting your progression the right way and in a safe way manner. All right, so now let's talk about the AFF course structure. So first thing, you'll have the ground training, which is basically a theory session, which is spent in class and it lasts about five to six hours. This is when you'll be reviewing everything safety wise, the emergency procedures you need to do, the malfunctions that you may have to face at any time. So you gotta be ready for those, understanding your gear, understanding how to pilot your canopy, understanding how to land. So that ground training is really made to teach you the theory behind everything that you'll be doing in your first jumps. Then after that session, you'll be ready to start with your instructors. At first two will be with you in the plane and then you'll end up with one instructor and at the end you'll end up being solo. So here's a breakdown maybe in a couple of words of each of those AFF levels or jumps. So the AFF level one is of course your first skydive. So there's a lot to think about. You'll have two instructors with you holding you in free fall, making sure that you don't tumble all the way down. And then you'll also have a radio once under canopy with someone to guide you through your landing pattern. In your AFF level two, this is when you will refine your body position to make sure that you are stable almost by yourself. And then on your AFF level three, all hands off. So if you're stable enough, your instructor will release you so that you can fly by yourself in free fall. At your AFF level four, you'll start to learn how to move yourself around. So do 90 degrees turn right and left. Then AFF level five, the focus is on doing 360 turns both ways. In AFF level six, you'll start to gain more confidence in your stability in free fall. Then in your AFF level seven, you'll start to put everything that you learn through those jumps and on the ground school together to perfect every little aspect of your flying. Finally, the AFF level eight is when you do your hop and pop. So this is when you will exit the plane at a lower altitude and open right away your canopy with minimum free fall time. It is also called the emergency exit practice, which will train you to exit the plane stable and open quickly if there's any emergencies with the aircraft. If you wanna know more about hop and pops and have tips and tricks to succeed in yours, make sure to click right here. So those first jumps are really made to introduce the basic practical concepts of skydiving while developing your confidence. So in order to pass each AFF level, you need to demonstrate that you are satisfying the key requirements uh, towards safety, free fall maneuvers, canopy piloting, canopy landing, and so on. These requirements will be made clear before each job so that you can really focus on those without, of course, forgetting all the safety aspect of the sport. What happens if you don't satisfy them? 
well, you may have to redo the same AFF level jumps. And again, that happens, that's normal. Do not be hard on yourself. It's just another chance for you to really master those requirements and that will really make you a more complete and safer skydiver in the sky. After each jump, your instructor will take the time to review the video of your jump, debrief, and give you tips and tricks to improve on the next one. All right, so now that your AFF is done, it's not over yet because you still have to get your A license, which is the first internationally recognized skydiving license. So if you want to jump elsewhere and make sure that you're recognized as a certified skydiver, you will want to complete your progression, which is around 10 more jumps where you consolidate all the knowledge that you gain through your AFF. So you need to do those jumps and also with coaches to help you improve certain aspect of your flying and then at the end you will receive your skydiving a license which will certify that you're now a solo skydiver. You can watch this video right here to understand more of the progression and what's next in terms of skydiving licenses. Now I hope you're ready for your skydiving course. I'm super excited that you decided to join the sky family and make sure to watch other videos from Skydive Vibes right there to help you get more prepared and become a better and safer skydiver in the sky. And on that, keep jumping, stay safe and blue skies.